All right, welcome to week two of HPA 464, Sociocultural Dimensions. Um, last week, I hope you enjoyed the article by Marmot and Braveman. Those articles were meant to provide an overview. I try to get everybody on the same page. Um, this week, what we're going to do is continue trying to explore and understand more about how does stress, how do these social determinants of health get inside our body? How do they impact our physiology and adversely impact the health of some groups and not other groups? This is really, really an important piece. We've got literature that describes how different groups have different outcomes, higher rates of death, um, less access to certain kinds of health care, but we really have to understand what is that pathway? How do the things outside of our body get inside and impact us? And, and that's not a clear question all the time. Um, so how does living in a neighborhood where there's violence, how does that result in people having higher rates of as asthma or worse, worse asthma? Um, if we look at Marmot's work, how does having a job where you have little control over what you do, where you have to do what you're told to do, how does that impact you having worse health outcomes? And in fact, in his research, worse health outcomes than other kinds, or it's a stronger factor than things like smoking or these other behaviors that we like to blame, obesity and things like that. Um, the job and things going on in our job might impact our health. How? So what I want you to do this week is to really try to think a little bit more about the mechanism, the pathway. Um, how is that getting inside of your body? Dr. Diaz Rue is one of the, I think, clearest thinkers on this topic. So you've got one of her readings this week to think about. Um, but I also want you all to uh, think about the, again, the disease that you're focusing on or the group that you're focusing on in terms of health disparities and try to begin developing a map or a model where you're thinking about all the different social determinants that are contributing to those outcomes. The healthcare system may be one big piece of that, but that's more of a downstream factor. I really want you to try to think more about the upstream factors that are going on as well, that are contributing to the problem. So what you're beginning to do is to beginning, you're beginning to think about how this is, what are the factors that are impacting the health. And that's where our interventions get targeted. Those are the levers where we can say, I might be able to change this if I can change this, knowing what the mechanisms, the factors are that are contributing to that. Um, by the end of this week, this is a week where I need everybody to know what your focus is for the course. Um, if several of you end up having the same topic, then I'll talk with you and we'll negotiate that. But for this time being, go ahead and just uh, post on there. Let me know what it is your focus is going to be. Call me if you have any questions. Email me, drop by. Um, and then I wanted to just talk just a little bit here, give you some suggestions or an example, really. So one of the areas I'm focusing in right now is type 2 diabetes in adults. And we really don't know what causes type 2 diabetes. We know physiologically what's gone wrong, but we don't know necessarily what happened that the pancreas isn't secreting enough insulin or that your body isn't able to use the insulin as effectively. We know there are risk factors. We know obesity. We know inactivity, physical inactivity, and having a family history. Those are risk factors, but those in and of themselves aren't causing the type 2 diabetes. So we don't know what's going on that's messing up the pancreas there. What we also know, so arguably what I'm looking at, my research really focuses on uh, provision of health care to these folks downstream. So once you develop diabetes, my research really focuses on how can we provide health care to you that works for you so that we can then even out what happens the course of the diabetes, that it doesn't progress much faster or in a worse way with more complications in some people than other people very much downstream. There are some 
and they're important upstream factors that but I'm just not looking at them at this time. Uh, there's some really interesting data from Canada that looks at diabetes and there are many folks that really consider diabetes to be a disease of poverty. They've mapped neighborhoods, SES, and what they found is that the neighborhoods that have the most poverty have the highest rates of diabetes. And so we got to think, well, why would that be? Is it poverty that's causing the diabetes? Or is there something, are there other things that go along with living in an impoverished environment that then are working their way through one of those known risk factors? For example, an obvious one is maybe they don't have access to fresh fruits, vegetables, or eating high fat food. Maybe obesity is the factor. Well, then I've got to map obesity over top that to see is it that the diabetes is following the obesity, which is following the poverty, or, or what's going on? I hope that that example is helpful for you to try to, again, thinking about this mechanism, peeling back and thinking about it. Um, I want you to focus on that this week as you read through the articles and as you do your homework, posting it on the discussion board. Thank you.